Okay guys, this is it. This is the Scoot Inn. This is where Eileen Warno stayed for a few weeks. This is the room right here, number seven, where Eileen Warno stayed for a few weeks during the first couple murders. I, I gotta say, I love the, um, the diamond plate there. That's pretty cool. All right guys, we are headed in. What's going on guys? We are currently at the Scoot Inn, which is the motel where Eileen Warno stayed uh, with her girlfriend. Uh, we were speaking with the owner a little bit. He said that he's actually experienced some interesting interactions in here. He didn't really chalk it up to paranormal, but he said kind of later he was thinking about it. He's like, oh yeah, it could have been what that was. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, Patty and I just got in here and we're actually um, just kind of taking a look around. I mean. <laughs> It, you know, the rooms are on the smaller side, so you know you can pretty much see the whole room when you walk in the door. And then there's the bathroom, okay? But we're just sitting here looking at the bed uh, because they actually have a really interesting pillow with a Ouija board on it. And I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. But we're smelling smoke. Yeah, right. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, so I can really like smell it. And when you don't smoke, you can smell it really good. And there's nobody out here smoking. I mean, it smells like somebody's in the room. Yeah, it does. When Smoking. You stick your nose to the window. You don't smell cigarette smoke. Not at all. No, no I don't. No, and you don't smell it when you. You can't wait. A little bit in here, but it's more like Weird. right in here. I, I, yeah, I smell it in here. She's here. Eileen, is that you? Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my my LED dowsing rods. Uh, the REM pod's going off. Eileen, I got something really cool here for you to check out. These are gonna help you communicate with us and we're gonna actually get the spirit box out shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them up. Now, let's go ahead and let them calibrate. Let's go ahead and let them calibrate and then I wanna ask you a couple questions, okay? So the yes answer I want you to cross them. Yep, just like that. And then go ahead and go back to open. Neutral. There we go. I, wow, I can feel you moving through my hands. This is insane, guys. Eileen, are you here with us? Wow. Is that you? Go ahead and go ahead and open for me. Is that you touching the REM pod? Oh, guys, I'm getting major chills right now. Um, this has been going crazy oh since God. I got out the dowsing rods. Oh, wow. I got mine set up over there. Okay. All right. <gasps> oh, my God. What? Eileen, how do you miss it here. when I asked if you were here? Are you here with us right now? Look at this. Oh, and the meter's going off. Okay, can you take it back to neutral? Can you open it back up for me? Gosh, look at this. Oh my God. Thank you, thank this you. This is where she lived, this is where she slept, this is where she, you know, hid out. Do you miss this place? She cried and, and, yes, she does. Oh All right. Wow, I, like I can feel her energy. I, I can feel it too. Going through my hands. We're doing a great job and I'm filming it. <laughs> okay, um, Eileen, we have empathy for, you know, your story, for what you've gone through. Um, we've already, you know what we've said at the bar, you know, we don't condone murder. She's saying, yeah, she knows what we said. Um, but, you know, we 100% condone defending yourself, which yes. is how this whole thing started. Yes. Um, and wow. Oh, my God. Do you have your K2 meter as well? Yeah, here. 
Why don't you go around the bed right here, at the end of the bed right here. Um, okay, so we don't, we don't condone murder, um, you know, but obviously we do believe that you should absolutely be able to defend yourself. What happened to you was disgusting, it was terrible, it was inhumane. Yes. And we're so sorry, you know, that you were, you were dealt this hand. You did not deserve any of that. Since I heard your story, I've been wanting to come here, and that was before I did anything paranormal. I just wanted to come kind of connect with you, I guess, is the word. Mm -hmm. Are you glad that we came to visit you today to, to try to find out your story? Oh, oh my God, an instant yes. It looks to me like, I'm sorry, I'm moving around in here. I'm trying to find my spirit box, but it looks like it, it like was forcefully pushed to yes. Um, I mean, this is an interesting question because guys, when I was trying to get um, my spirit box out, oh, I was trying to get my spirit, oh, <laughs> I was trying to get my uh, necrophonic out and my speaker out, and my dowsing rods fell out instead. Eileen, were you the one that pulled my dowsing rods out of my bag? Oh I knew it. I freaking God. knew it, Patty. I knew it. She wanted, you knew it. You even said that. You felt like she pulled them out of your bag. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, my, my LED's flickering on my dowsing rods. Really? That's I don't know amazing. what's going on right now. That is amazing. Eileen, it's gonna take a little bit more energy, but can you please light up the REM pod? Come on, you can do it. Do it for all the people that wronged you. Just to show them that you're still here. Just grab this thing. Just grab it. Move it if you want to. Just don't break it, please. She is really close to it. Yes, yeah, she definitely is. Wow. Okay, I see a butt print over here. Yes. And I don't think that was there before. It was not there. I want to ask her if she's sitting on the bed. Whoa. I was trying to zero it out. Eileen, are you sitting on the bed right now? Is that your butt print? That is oh, all. All right, go ahead and go ahead and set them back for me. Calvary, thank you. Wait a minute. This bathroom light's on now. You didn't walk over here and turn it on, did you? No. Wait, you asked me to come over here and look at it and see if it was on earlier. Yeah. And I did, and it wasn't on, but it's on now. That was a few minutes ago. Okay. Eileen, did you just turn on the light in the bathroom? I mean, you know, feel free to move the door, turn the turn the water on, whatever it is that you want to do to show people that you are still here. You, your last words were, I'll be back. And, um, you know, some of us believe that you actually never left. Yeah. Do, do anything. Flicker that bathroom light if, if you can do that more easily. I'm feeling really drained. Yeah, I think she's she's pulling on our energy. This is the original tile. I mean, this you can tell this has been here for years. Now, I have a black light that picks up blood. Now, I know it's been 30 years, but this is the original, I believe, because, I mean, you can tell it's very old. It's been here a long time, so I'm sure it's the same one that was here then she would have taken showers in. I mean yeah look at the stains around it you can see like a you know what you can see like almost like a splatter yeah like a yellow like a yellowish stain around it as if it's maybe something that to try to wait the REM pod's going off oh it is Eileen is that blood left over from when you were here How do you feel about your face being on this bedspread? Did you notice that she's on the bedspread? No, is she? Yeah, it's the same as our shirts. I don't know oh, how I don't yes. know how I'd feel about that if I was her. 
Yeah. So you're actually on a bedspread here. The last resort. We gotta lighten it up. Um, trigger moment. All right, Eileen, we're gonna go ahead and um, turn on the spirit box in a minute here so that you can talk to us. Yep, there's a picture of the shirt. Arrested at the world famous last resort bar. Well, you know what? You made it world famous. Yeah, I wouldn't have been world famous without you, that's for sure. So for those of you that did not see the movie, Monster, uh, we found out from Al actually that okay. Monster was not actually in reference to her. It actually was in reference to a Ferris wheel at Fun Spot, which is an amusement park. It's kind of like a permanent carnival. Lisa and I've been there before. Basically, it was this giant Ferris wheel and, and it was her biggest fear, which is, <laughs> I'm dumbfounded by the fact that that was her biggest fear. I know. After all she's been through, she was terrified of a Ferris wheel, but you know what? She got on that Ferris wheel, she conquered her fears for the girl. If you've not seen the beginning of the movie Monster, it showed her as a child and her hopes and dreams were that she would one day be famous and rich. You know, a lot of people have dreams like that. She's no different. But the interesting thing is, she has become infamous. I mean, you know, Eileen, how do you feel about the fact that most people know who you are? It's pretty amazing. I still cannot believe we're in this room. I can't either. I've been waiting for this for so many years and it's finally happening and it's honestly, it's just as great as I thought it would be. Right? Yeah. I mean, how are you feeling right now? Um, just blown away that we're actually sitting inside the room where she, she was. Especially after, I've watched the movie twice now, and uh, I followed the story from the time it, you know, the first person was found because the man was from Clearwater, which is where I was from. So we have a trigger object on the bed, which is a Bud Light beer in the can. She loved beer. So we have a Bud Light as the trigger object right now on the bed. Um, Eileen, we have a beer on the bed. We know how much you liked your beer and you liked your cigarettes. Um, if there's any way possible you can move that Bud Light can of beer, that would be awesome. Whether it knock it over, move it, something. Open it. Open it. Drink it. That would be awesome. That would be so cool. I'm going to turn this on. Here we go, guys. Eileen, come talk to us, please. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I know you spent a lot of time in this room, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, I heard something. What's that? It sounded like a voice. It did. Whoa. So we're going to turn this on. I don't know where that was coming from. Hi there, Eileen. Come talk to us. My name is Patty and this is Jen. We were just at the last resort bar. We know that you spent a lot of time in here and this is the motel that you came back to after you killed your first victim and possibly several others. What were your thoughts? What were you thinking? Stupid. Is that what that said? I heard stupid. Well, the first one was definitely not your fault. The first one was clearly in self-defense. What was his name? We know his name, but we want to hear you tell us. We just want to make sure we're talking to you. Okay. 
I think it said Mallory. Really? I think it did. It just took a minute to write. I had to look up his name. Did mm -hmm. Eileen. What else would you like to say to us? We would love to hear more from you. Again. Did you have any remorse? <laughs> I, I can understand, you know, the first guy and everything, but did you have any remorse for the other ones? Others. Others? The first one was in self-defense, for sure. What was that? If I know. Was that no. remote control on the floor? No. I don't think, I mean... I Patty. So. She said Patty. She said Patty. Eileen, was that you? Did you just say Patty? Did you feel that remote control on the floor? Where was it anyway? Now guys, we are not staying the night here. We are only allowed in here one hour, so we gotta go. The owner, Mike, of the Scoot Inn was nice enough to allow us to come here. Yes. To conduct our investigation. He was super sweet. So. Yes. Please go check him out. We're going to give you the link to this place. Um, you know, if you're going to want to come out and check out the room. I mean, yeah. I believe they only charge like maybe $70 a night, something like that. Uh -huh. Now, I do know that it's up for sale currently. So, you know, if you're interested in a possibly haunted hotel, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. I mean, not many people can say they own the place where Eileen Warno slept. I know. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Necrophonic. Eileen, we are reaching out to you. We know that you want to communicate. You've been very good at communicating with us so far. Please feel free to continue to touch the REM pod. Um, that's that round thing that's got the red light on it or the thing that is sitting there with the green light on. That's the K2 meter. Feel free to have a little bit of that beer. That is for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this on and you can talk to us and we will be able to hear you. Here we go. <laughs> Eileen, are you are you here with us? Priest's name. Can you tell us, please? What? Elisa. Elisa? Mm -hmm. That's Lisa's name. Tell us where he's at. Where did you put his body? said priest. I think it did. Is this the priest? <laughs> did Eileen kill you or was it Ty? Both. Both, yes, I just heard that. Oh my god. Where's your body? Body here. Buried. Buried.
Did you smoke in this room all the time? Because we smelled smoke in here earlier. Was that you smoking, Eileen? We smelled smoke. It was pretty strong when we came in here. Was that you? <laughs> I gotta be honest, guys, this is a really creeps to room at night. I know. It's totally she said, I'll shoot. What? Did you hear that? No, I didn't. It said, I'll shoot. This is, uh, it's it actually it's really get dark outside. Um, it is definitely got a different vibe in here now that it's getting dark. Something's. <laughs> I mean, it's not a dark vibe. Dark. No, it, it just feels uh -huh. a little creepy. It's not. It's just creepy, and I feel a lot of sadness here. I do too, and regret. Yeah, sadness and regret. Tra trapped. Did you feel trapped? <laughs> you had a. Pretty rough life from the very beginning. What's that? Oh, touched my face. Really? Yes. Holy shit. Wow. Was that you that just touched my face? It just felt something like I touched my face. Like just like something just went. Like that. Oh. I get it. You touching my face? Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. In the movie. Their girlfriend. Remember they were laying there in bed and she said, Can I touch your face? Who said that? In that movie. Who said to who? <laughs> Girlfriend said it to Eileen. Oh, she did? Yeah, she goes, Can I just touch your face? Remember that? You don't remember that part of the movie? Are you making a pass at Patty? Okay. Um, Get back out with the dousing rods because she keeps pulling down my bag. Do the dousing rods. I'm just, I'm not, I'm gonna sit them here so she can see them, I think. Uh, I'm not even gonna like ask her anything because it, it was draining me too much. Okay. I'm just gonna sit them on the bed and. I think she needs the pull energy. Yeah. That's there what I think is going on. Okay, set him on the bed. I'll sit him here by her beer. Okay, look, guys, nothing's going off. Nothing's going off. Okay. But she can pull her energy from you. All right, Eileen, I've sat the I've sat the housing rods on the bed for you, so you can go ahead and pull some energy out of that, so you can light up the K2 meter. What? Or the REM pod. Can you go ahead and, and get some energy from those dowsing rods real quick? And then light up that light up that REM pod right there in the middle of that for us. Like you were doing earlier. That was pretty intense. We, we were in the bathroom earlier, guys, and she was lighting the heck out of that thing. It was crazy. I feel like she's saying a lot to us. We just can't hear what she's saying right now. I think so, too. Come on, Eileen. What did she say? I'm here. I think she said I'm here. Eileen. Did you say your name? Hi. Please sit down. Oh my god. Eileen's here. Oh my god, yes. We're glad you came to talk to us because we came here to talk to you. Yes, we did. You're doing a great job with that REM pod. Go ahead and touch it. Just wrap your hand around it. Oh, <laughs> I did. Sonic movement. Yes. <laughs> Yes. 
Make that thing go crazy for us, Eileen. <laughs> Guilty. Did you hear that? Wow. She said guilty. Well, at least you're, you know, woman enough to admit it. Most people would never admit to what they did. I can't see it. Are you okay on the other side, Eileen? Are you okay? Where are you at? this but did you make it to heaven were you forgiven and taken into heaven I do know that she became a Christian before she was executed Eileen are you in heaven right now That's good. Well, what? Why do you come back here? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> that was like weird. It's probably just kind of like a residual energy, maybe, or I don't know. She's answering our questions, though. She is. And I have a feeling that they know when someone is trying to reach out to them. Do you have to they show back up there. Eileen, do you need help crossing over? Um, I do. I do. I just heard something move. Yeah. Eileen, did you just move something in here? Yes. yes. What did you move? It sounded like something sliding. I just, I, I know, I hear that. What do, what do I smell? It's like a perfume. Oh, I smell it. I smell that perfume too. Sweet. sweet. Yes, it smells sweet. Oh my God. It smells a little better, actually. It smells like apple cinnamon or something. Yes. Pi Did I hear pie? Did you say pie? Was that one of your happy childhood memories? Maybe your grandmother used to bake for you? I did find out that her grandmother passed when she was, I think, 12 or something like that. Don't hold me to it. It, it was at a young age. It was either 12 or 13, something like that. Um, and then that was when the abuse started with her grandfather's friend. So, um, it makes me sad because I feel like she probably did have a, a decent... A decent upbringing with her grandmother around yeah. and then when she lost her so i'm wondering if maybe that's a smell that she's letting us experience like her happiness it's starting to dissipate now but i do i do still smell it i i just feel like she wants us to experience that she did have some happiness and look at the meter it's on, yeah. the, on the on the bed the k2 meter is just going <laughs> crazy just now <laughs> Eileen, light up that thing on the bed for us, all the way, if you're letting us experience one of your happy memories. I do. Look, look. Can you light it all the way to red? You almost got it. You got this. You can do this. My battery's draining. Your meter just went all the way to red. Did it really? And I missed it. Can you do it again? I missed it. Please. Please, please. Do you want to drink your beer? This bud's for you. Beer. 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 <laughs> 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 
after the <laughs> frog. Are you using the LEDs to give you some more strength? I feel like you are. I feel like you're using the LEDs to give you strength. Yes, I thought so. I just noticed that. What is going on here? What is happening? Eileen, are you moving those hangers? Hanger. I just heard hanger. What? A little bit. Can you move them again for us? Here. Okay, something just touched my leg. Oh really? Yeah. Right. It said right. That's sad. I felt it again. And I shouldn't be feeling it because my phone is in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like somebody's doing like that. Oh, pushing wow. on my leg. Might be her. Are you are you touching my leg, Eileen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey Eileen, can we speak to some of the victims? Are they near that you can get their attention and tell them to come talk to us? <laughs> and if so, John? Okay guys, so this is really interesting. So earlier when we were at the last resort bar, I was talking to Al a little bit about, um, there was a documentary that was made about Eileen by someone named, I don't even want to give him any more credit than he already has, but Nick Broomfield. He actually came over from the UK, I believe, to, to film this. And this movie documentary is what made him very famous. And he knew this is what he was doing. I mean, you know, so he basically tried to befriend Eileen, you know, she trusted him. And basically he used her and then kind of, he was very rude to her, like at the end of the documentary. Like basically like I got what I want. So, you know, wow. F you, like burn it or whatever. Like I mean, it was terrible. Okay, so apparently her body was cremated. Eileen was. Um, her ashes were spread beneath a tree in her native Michigan by her childhood friend Dawn. That's the one I wanted to try oh, to contact. Okay. okay. She was her only friend throughout her whole prison term that they used to write to each other re regularly. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Warnos requested that Natalie Merchant's song Carnival, which I'm sure everybody's probably heard at some point or another, mm -hmm. be played at her funeral. Merchant commented on this when asked why she permitted Carnival to be played during the credits of the documentary Eileen, Life and Death of a Serial Killer. So we have to watch that, Patty. Oh, yeah. Uh, when he sent working edit of the film, Natalie Merchant was so disturbed by the, by the film and how she led such a tortured life that was beyond her worst nightmares. It wasn't until I was told that Eileen spent many hours listening to my album Tiger Lily, went on death row and requested Carnival be played at her funeral, that I gave permission for the use of the song. It's very odd to think of places my music can go once it leaves my hands. If I gave her some solace, I have to be grateful. Wow. So that kind of just gives me the chills. Like it's yeah, just, me too. Wow. It's a little heart-wrenching, but you know. Mm -hmm. It's true though, like music is the yeah. universal language, you know? Yeah, it definitely is. Wow. You know, there's only so much we can do here in this small motel room, and I think we've done enough. We've been here for three <gasps> hours. Oh, the meter continues to go off here and there. We know she that, doesn't want us to leave. We know that she's still here. We'll come back. We'll come back, Eileen. We know that she's still around. We, we felt her presence in the bar when we filmed there. We felt her presence in here. So from the time we walked in, that K2 meter's gone off as well. Wow, and, um, look at this K2 I meter. I see that. I, I have to be honest off. though, I'm feeling a bit exhausted. I am too. I feel completely drained, drained from filming in here. There's going to be a lot of mixed reviews in the comment section about this case. Um, and if you haven't seen the movie, which is true, every bit of it, we heard it from the guy at the bar. He said every single bit of that was true. He knew her for a long time. He's owned that bar for 40 years. Yeah, he said he knew her very well and everything in, in that movie was true. So 
don't come in the comment section and talk a bunch of crap about how could you like a serial killer. How could you be sticking up for her? I'm not sticking up for her. Just because you empathize with someone yeah. doesn't mean that you're taking yeah. their side. I empathize with her because of what she's went through. She was raped as a child by her own grandfather's friends. And her grandfather too? Or not? And apparently molested by her brother. And, and apparently molested by her brother. Um, there's a really sad story behind all of this. I mean, the first victim that she shot and killed was raping her and was actually going to kill her. He had a saw where he was going to cut up her body and dispose of it, but she got him first. She was a genius. She was a genius, yes, but she had some serious mental issues, needed help for many years, probably didn't even realize she needed help. Had she got some mental help and got some help, period, yeah. just some, some kind of financial support, some family support, things like that, she would have probably never done any of this. I mean, she didn't have anybody. She didn't have anybody, yeah. Except for her childhood anybody. friend, you know, who yep. was kind of her saving grace, her only um, outside person, point yeah. of contact, like for her 12 yeah. years that she was in yep. prison, that was the only person. Yep. Except for people that used her, you know, and came and, you know, interviewed her and used her. Yep. And I was a victim of a violent crime when I was younger and I never talked about it and I'm not going to talk about it. But I was a victim and so was Jen. Yep. We were both victims. So we can kind of understand where her mind went with this, especially being having it happen over and over again. I mean, over and over and over again. The PTSD, you yeah. know, I mean, it's one thing if it happens to you once, you're going to have PTSD, but if it's something that's happening to you repetitively, yeah. I mean, that's going to mess you up for life. I know, I know. I mean, guys, everybody deserves to have their story told, yeah. you know, whether you agree with it or not. This is what happened to her. You know, and that was her life, and we just want to, yeah. I don't know, we just feel like she deserves to have yeah. somebody tell her story that's being fair about it. You know, that And here's do. the thing, guys, they can call her a serial killer all they want, but serial killers do not know what remorse feels like. That's right. So, you know, I disagree. I don't think she was a serial killer. I think she was a victim of circumstance. I mean, this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. If y'all want to bite anybody's ass off, bite my ass off, not Patty's. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't know. I feel like she was a victim of circumstance, and I know a lot of people cry the victim. But, um, you know, I mean, she even said on the spirit box, guilty. She knows what she did. She's sorry for it. And, you know, I hope she was able, you know, to find redemption. And it sounded like she did. So Yeah, yeah, I hope so, too. And I smell that strong smell of apples again. Do you smell it? Yeah. Oh. Can you light up the um the meter for us again? Oh. Say yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to say to us before we leave? We're getting ready to leave. <coughs> oh, it's lighting up. Look at that. It just lit all the way up to red. That is awesome. Thank you for doing that. So this is Mike. He's actually the owner of the Scoot Inn. Hey, I uh, wanted to tell you that I was sitting outside room 9, two doors down. And but wow, the uh, light was flickering outside of room 4. What? So it was like off, on, off, on. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I think this thing is getting ready to die on me. And I took out the, the globe and uh, I said to my wife came in. I said, look, room four is really flickering. And she goes, yeah, I see it. And I said, all right, well, whatever. I said, I don't know if I, I got any bulbs left. So I went to the office. And I found a bulb, and I came outside, and the bulb outside room four was red. What? It was red. Is it still doing it? No, I'm, I'm looking at it. So I'm looking at it. It's like, what's it red about? You know, I'm like, so I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, and then it goes clear white, and uh, I you know, unscrewed it, screwed it back in, did, and did all that crap, and it stayed white. So I screwed the globe back up and it's fine. So this just happened? Yes, while you were here. What? So I'm like, what's that about? That's wild. All right guys, so we had an amazing time here. It is unbelievable. 
the activity that we were getting. I mean, the REM pod was going crazy. The K2 meter was going crazy. So we just found out it's $59 per night to stay here. I mean, that's already like the low, low rate. So just be sure to tell them that Raptor Adventures and the G team sent you guys. And we'll see you on our next Raptor Adventure.